Hello and welcome to Retro Circuits. If you're new to this channel, I talk about retro computers, how to program them, hack them, tinker with them, and also review retro computer games. Today is a third part of programming sprites and sound on the Commodore 64. We are going to see what is the screen RAM. Basically, it's an area in the Commodore 64 RAM where you can place a character in a grid of 1000 characters. It is a blue screen that you see here. That blue square is where you can place one of those characters. You can also control the color that is going to be in each cell. This is going to be very useful because you can create simple games or a semi-graphical interface for a particular program that you might need. To develop this series, I'm using the 664 that you can see here. This is a remake of the Commodore 64. It is emulated, of course. I posted a video with a little introduction of this computer. You can check the link below. Of course, you can use the emulator. You don't need to use either the 664 nor the real 664 but the cool thing about this is that you have a real keyboard a real Commodore 64 keyboard let's get into it remember to watch the other videos the one about the binary in hexadecimal system and also the one about the simulator they will get you the what you need to get here this blue screen that you see here also represents a memory area of the Commodore 64, which is the screen RAM. You can basically place a character anywhere around this uh, blue screen. So better understand this, imagine this as a grid. So this grid uh, has the first position on the top left corner will be position number 1024. That will be the memory location of that position which is the one I placed the cursor right now that is blinking. To modify any position in memory, we use a command called poke. This command, followed by the memory location, and the value we want to put it there, will modify that memory location immediately and add in that location the value that we specifying the command. So in this case, we have that the up left corner, the first cell of these 1000 uh, characters grid is going to be modified to show the character number one. And that is the letter A, the character A. This grid is composed of 40 columns and 25 rows. It starts at the location 1024 and the last one is the 2023. In fact, if we type the common poke 2023, and again, we pass the parameter that the value one, we see that an A is displayed on the right lower corner. There is also a color run, which starts at the position 55296 and ends at the position 56295 which basically matches exactly that grid for every character. So for example, the first character in the top left corner, which is A that we place there, let's change the value of that memory location for the color and make that a white. Poke, 55296, and one for the color white. So you see the A changed to color. In this way, we can easily manipulate any character in this grid and also the color of each character. The codes for the character here are different than the pesky table. So if you search on the web, search for screen codes, don't search for pesky table because the pesky table has a lot of codes for characters that you cannot print. And here only we will show, and it can only show the characters that you can actually print. Let's write a very simple comment to basically print all the characters that can be printed, that can be visualized in this area. And we are going to start from the first position and it will end until we reach in the number 255, which is, remember, is the maximum number that a byte can hold. Okay, we made a syntax error in line 70. Let's, let's see the program. I forgot to pass the value to the command poke. Here, 
Here you are, this is a list of characters that can be printed on the screen and we were basically placing each character in each memory location and basic, uh, increasing the index, increasing the value until 255 so we can see all the characters that can be printed on the screen. Let's analyze quickly this program. Basically in line 10 the RAM uh, comment is just to add a comment. So the basic interpreter of the Commodore 64 is going to ignore completely whatever is coming after the RAM. Then in line 20 we have print and chr dollar 147. The reason I'm doing this is because basically the chr dollar is a string function. You can put in there any pesky uh, code and it will print it. So in the Commodore 64, in the original I mean, keyboard, you can actually do that, accomplish that, by using the clear home character. For example, here, if I go shift clear home, you can clear the screen. And you can also accomplish this by print, double quote, shift control home, you have this reverse heart symbol, double quote, and if you press enter, it will clear the screen as well. But what if you're using an emulator? Well, in that case, I don't want to put you through the trouble of trying to find what kind of combination will be in your computer keyboard to try to accomplish the correspondent shift clear home uh, combo of keys, which are particularly special for the Commodore 64. So another way to accomplish that is to execute, basically get that character through uh, the CRHR dollar uh, string function which we then pass a parameter in this case 147 and the print comment before that so basically what it's gonna do is the same It's gonna exit that chr uh, as a dollar function is going to return it's gonna be the same as you put the character if you still don't familiarize with the concept of a function basically we pass a parameter in this case 147 and it will return something what it's going to return in this case is the character that we want in the pesky table. That character corresponds to the one that when printed will clear the screen. That's the reason I'm using that uh, here and in print chr147 to avoid to basically make it compatible with people using a simulator, an emulator. Also, remember in basic you have to put lines as uh, you had to number the lines by yourself as you saw me type in the program. And that's why you do by 10 by 10, like 10, 20, 30, and so forth. Because maybe you, re you decide to add something later. And to do that, you need some numbers, some space in between to do that. For example, in this case, I did it on purpose, so you can see it, but I put the line 25. This line, what it does is basically prints a series of like empty lines in order for me not to have the ready, uh, this ready prompt that exists here. Uh, in the middle of the uh, of the full characters that I printed on on the screen. So, for example, when I run this, you see that the ready is actually after all of this. This is happening because I am printing the line twenty five, uh, basically from zero to five, uh, six times print, and that's what the common for x st for stands for for basically creates a loop of a numerated amount of time. So four and x equals zero to five is going to loop through and increase the value of the variable x from zero to five. And then it's going to print, it's going to execute um, a comment, and then the next x closes the loop. So basically everything between four and next is executed as many times as it's specified in the for loop. We will go more deep into the basic programming language a little bit in the, in the next video I'm going to make about how to use this knowledge of the screen RAM into something, uh, of, into a program that actually does something. Then the line number 40 is SM equal 1024. This is screen memory. Uh, this is a variable. So if you're not familiarized with a variable, basically think about a variable as a name for a memory position. So we are telling any time uh, we, we say, for example, SM is, an, is a variable or I or X, and we give a value to it internally is going to assign to that label, to that variable name, 
a memory location. And then the value that we assign to that is going to put that value into that memory location. So internally, in this case, interpreter, the basic interpreter is going to know exactly which memory location corresponds for each variable. So we don't have to deal with the memory location of everything in this case. We just say, OK, the variable called SM, which is we decided as a, as a short way of saying screen memory, will correspond to the value number 1024. If we then later change it, the interpreter internally will know that we change it, that value, and it's going to that particular memory location where SM points, and it's going to replace the value, the value there with whenever we decide to put in there. The column that you can see here in 940 is to put two comments in one line. We can actually, we could break this down into two lines instead of one. Then CM is another variable. In this case, the number 55296, as we saw before, is for the color screen. So here what it's saying is like the screen memory starts at 1024 and the color memory starts at 55296. Then in line 15, another comment is loop through all 255 possible var uh, values and print them on the screen. Then line 60 says for i equal to 0 to 255. So remember, byte Remember that byte can get 256 values. That is any number between 0 and 255. So here in line 60, you have another loop that starts with a 4. Say for every value of i that goes from 0 to 255, execute whatever it's between the 4 and the command and the command next which is on the line 90. So it's going to execute 70 and 80. The line 17 and 80 are going to be executed 256 times. It's got from 0 to 255. The variable i is going to change every time of interact e iteration of that loop. So the variable i is going to be zero and then it's going to become one and two and three and so forth until 255. So the line 70 is going to be poke sm which is 1024 plus i the first time is going to be zero so it's going to be 1024 and that's it. Comma i which was going to be zero and zero is the upper sign as you can see on the top left corner of that screen uh, code. And then the next line is going to say, okay, poke, now go to the color memory, CM, which is going to be 55296, and position plus I, which is going to be zero, because it, remember, it's the first interaction here of the loop, zero, and put there the value one, because we want all these characters to be of color white. And then next, I closes the loop, and it will force it to go back to line 60, to read again, and in this case, it's going to increment the value of I from zero to one, and then repeat the process every time, and so forth for every single value of i until it reaches 255. That's why you can see all these values written and basically positioned on the screen when we uh, type run. One more time, and that's a loop working in there. So that's it. This is the screen memory. We can use this to create very simple basic games or to create some sort of, um, well, uh, ASCII art or I would say pesky art. And you can, um, well, use it also to create some sort of um, UI or something in any program that you might uh, create later. In the next video, we are going to try a little program to do something a little bit more useful with the knowledge that we learned today. Basically, this pro program, you can print a little uh, circle or yeah, anywhere here in the screen and create very, very basic uh, ASCII art. Then you can go and to the same position and with the space bar, delete it. We will see at the basic program to do this and go through it so we can get a little bit more knowledge about the basic programming language which we are not going to use that much then in the future remember when you want to do something a little bit more productive with a commodore 64 you will need to learn machine language but this will give us a good start if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe also next to the subscribe button there is a little bell remember to hit that so you can get notifications when a new video is released usually every wednesday 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.